Here we have our grammar for Mo with arithmetic and functions. We're going to start using a different style of writing grammars going forward, and that's shown here on the bottom of the slide. So the version on the top is convenient for us as people implementing interpreters in Splate because it's a comment that we can stick right inside of our Splate program, and it's referring to syntax objects, which are what we're using to represent Mo programs internally to Splate. The grammar on the bottom is more convenient for people using the language because it simply says an expression can be one of the following things a symbol, an addition, a multiplication, or a function call. So this version on the bottom is called BNF form. You'll see this in lots of different language definitions, and BNF is short for Bacchus Nauer or Bacchus Normal form. So here's our grammar, and as a reminder, here's our abstract syntax that we've been using to represent expressions. Now we'd like to extend Mo with local definitions, so we're going to add a new case to our grammar for let expressions. Let's look at a few examples. So here, if we say let x equals 1 plus 2, x plus x, the result of evaluating this is 6. And the way that works is the name x is introduced locally. x is bound to the value of evaluating 1 plus 2. And then inside the body, when we see an x, we look up at those two results together, x plus x. So 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2, that gives us 6. Since let is an expression, we can put that any place where an expression is allowed. So here we're adding one to the result of a let expression. We can also do two parallel lets and add those two together. And in fact, if we rename the second x to use y instead as the name that it's binding, we get the same result as before. We can nest one let inside of another let. So here on the outside, we say let x equals one plus two. Then the inner let says let x equals four plus negative three, or let x equals one. And now inside the let body, the x that are inside here, they refer to the first definition of x that they find. So we have 1 plus 1 inside, and that gives us the result of 2. If we rename the inner binding, so now we have y equals 4 plus negative 3. When we get to the evaluating the x on the inside, we look up, y does not match x. So we keep looking up, and now we have uh, x is bound to 1 plus 2 equals 3. Inside the body, we have 3 plus 3, and that gives us 6. On the right-hand side of a let, we can refer to previously bound definitions. So on top, we say x equals 1 plus 2. The x here, inside x plus 4, this does not refer to the x on the inner binding because that one hasn't been defined yet. Instead, it looks up one level, and it sees, okay, 1 plus 2 is the value for x here. 1 plus 2 plus negative 4, that gives us negative 1. And then inside the body, we look up to the first x that we find. Now, here's our abstract syntax for uh, the let expression. So in the grammar, there are three parameters to keep track of, a symbol and two expressions. So that's exactly what we have down below in the abstract syntax. A let expression has n, which is a symbol, RHS for right-hand side, that's an expression, and then body, that's another expression.